Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday. It is October 26. This will be our chart listing for the day, and a couple of real quick announcements before we get started on the chart lesson. Uh, one, uh, a few of you have come in here in the last day or so asking about the Ninja Trader discount. Well, they only gave us 48 hours, and that's long gone. So. Um, and they will not honor it now. So they gave us a 48 hour window. And if you missed it, then they won't, they won't honor it. And I know that because a couple of you asked and I, we tried to pass it on through and they, they wouldn't accept it. So, um, yeah, if you missed out on that, I apologize. I'll try to get another one going here soon. Maybe we can get up another group and, uh, get another discount of some type for everybody. Uh, but, um, if it were up to me, I'd still honor it, but Ninja Trader, has their own rules and I don't make, I don't call the shots on that. So, and they said uh, 48 hours and that's all they'd give us. So um, for those of you that did get the discount, glad I was able to help you out there some. And uh, again, we'll try to do it again in the future. So as far as tomorrow, just a heads up, no mid morning chart in the morning and no chart lesson here on YouTube tomorrow. I'm having my, surgery for my left eye tomorrow and this will be the final surgery and hopefully I'll have good vision after this and everything will be good to go and I'll kind of be back to normal for those of you that are maybe new or out of the loop I had a detached retina uh, a little in December of 2018 and I've had to have a few surgeries to repair that and then that caused a cataract in my eye there's some something to do with the gas bubble causes you have a cataract so I had to have that surgery first to correct the detached retina, and then I had to have cataract surgery. And so now I have a bifocal lens in my right eye because of that cataract surgery. Well, it doesn't match my left eye, and it, it causes a depth perception issue. It doesn't really affect my trading too much. I can't see as well as I could, but really my vision is almost back to 99% in my right eye. So I feel real good. A lot of times, you know, people lose their vision with a detached retina. And so I'm thankful that I got mine back to maybe 98 to 99% normal. Uh, I don't even have to wear a contact or glasses in that eye anymore. So it's, 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 I'm, I feel blessed that I, I do have my vision back almost completely in that eye. However, um, to make things normal for me, with my depth perception and to be able to see properly, I need to have a bifocal lens in the left eye too. So that's what I'm going in for tomorrow. And uh, I'm just having, it's basically just like cataract surgery. So it should be pretty straightforward. I'll only be out for tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be back in the office regular on Wednesday. Um, that's the plan anyway. So I think I was good to go the following day last time. So I should be able to, to again, if, if you don't see anything from me Wednesday, you'll know. I'll probably put up something just to let you know if I'm not going to be back Wednesday. But my plan is only to be out tomorrow. So there won't be anything tomorrow. Um, and I'll be back regularly for my usual stuff on Wednesday. That's the plan at this point. So we should have a chart, uh, mid-morning chart on Wednesday and a chart lesson too, unless... Um, you know, there's some kind of complication or something doesn't, you know, I'm not feeling well or whatever. But uh, my plan is to be back for a normal day Wednesday, but nothing for tomorrow. That's the main thing I wanted to let you know. So rather than continue and take up a lot of time with that, let's go over the chart here real quick and wrap today up. It was all downhill today, but this was not an easy trading day because it, it really was hard to find this larger trend channel. And it didn't really help you. You still had to use the short term stuff. If you'd have known this midlines here, it helps a little right in here. Um, but you really couldn't find, I mean, you could draw this right off the bat up here, but there was, you know, generally you'd, you would draw it down here and it just doesn't really fit or match up. And so until we continued on here, I was still looking uh, at this as maybe one trend here, but it come to, in the end, there's a two tiered channel working down. And you've got all this stuff, a lot of sideways stuff in the middle, too. So uh, this gets hard to trade in here, especially this right here. Um, 
and again right here that stuff's hard to trade and you're better off just to kind of sit tight I marked one trade in there I think and I'll explain that one when we get to it uh, notice there's really nothing marked in this one here uh, I just think it's a little it's just it's just too risky and uh, again we'll talk about it when we get there but um, let's try and think if there's anything else I wanted to talk about the big picture uh, again if you did have this if you did find this early the midline helps a little bit right in here but uh, even then it's still sideways so you got to be really careful uh, but let's back out we'll talk about the trades and notice there's no longs until down here and this is generally a little bit earlier but again there's a special setup here I'll explain to you and then obviously we're working higher here and we're probably headed back to the highs which that's exactly where we were going before we turned down again and we ended up breaking out of that here so uh, but let's back out we'll go through the trades and I've tried to color coordinate these just to make them a little easier to see but early on we were obviously trending down here and you had this two-tier channel that was in play we did have an overshoot here and we were starting to work up so you would want to draw this channel actually in the very beginning I had it right here and then when we shot higher up right in here I moved it up and you can see it does fit better like that until we finally got an overshoot and then reversed but we're just working back to the other side but this is mostly up here and so seven o'clock comes just as we're turning down here so there's no real short entry here until we get this break here and uh, a you might have looked at this as a lower high. I would have much rather seen it uh, back up here or a failed second entry long or something. But it's still a lower high, and it is off the EMA. And this has been a downtrend. So you may take that trade. There's plenty of room to get out before that low. But when it bounces there, and conf really when it bounced here, it pretty much confirmed. But normally you'd draw this through that and what it is there's really a shorter term one in here just in case because people will send me theirs and say well I drew it like this well if you drew it like that that's correct too it's just a shorter term one notice you get your break two legs up and that was really over before um, seven o'clock even started so if you drew it like that it's okay that's that's it's there so nothing wrong with that but it turns out there's another one here and you can see we bounce right here that really confirms it but again normally you'd have the shorter term one drawn and so technically this one doesn't get confirmed until here and when it bounces here then you know hey this is probably valid and again when we went a little higher here I just moved it up a little more you can see it the midline did fit better all the way across there after that so I believe this to be correct and there's a um, a little bit of a reversal here I just looked at this really as a double bottom and you got this first move up and you try to go short once twice okay I had a slight interruption there um, I can't remember where we were I think we were we were talking about this and it turns up here and it pulls back once and tests that midline it pulls back twice this is a little bit congestive uh, but it does bounce off the trend line and it gives you a double test of the EMA gives you a fairly bullish signal bar so you may go long right there uh, since it is off since you have not only the trend line you also got the midline um, and we are looking for prices to go back to the high side possibly so um, again it's a little bit aggressive because it's a little bit congestive but the reason it's congestive is trying to go lower and it can't get through that midline and notice what happens once it gets that double test people give up and it goes straight up and you go try once you try to go high twice and it actually breaks higher and turns down so when it breaks lower here that's a failed second entry long it's also a second entry short it's a it's a second entry short on an all-in-one bar because it broke higher and turned down all in one bar um, this one you could actually argue for this one to be red um, but it's close so I I just think it's still a little bit aggressive so I marked it green and it would have been a great trade but 
you know, you don't know it, it's a little bit congestive again. Notice you got one, two, three, you got several bars. But again, the reason you got in congestion is because there's still a lot of buying power here, but but there's not enough to get through to, to um, overcome the trend channel line. And that's pretty typical. You see it tries it again up here. They keep trying to go long and then finally they give up and boom, the bottom falls out. But you're back to the uh, that bigger main trend line as well. Plus you're coming off this one, so you got a double... And notice I get stuck between the downtrend line, the upper trend channel line, and the EMA. It's just kind of fighting all three of those. And eventually one of them is going to win out. And obviously the bigger trend channel wins out in the end and off it goes. So um, it's just really hard to know right in here what prices are doing. They're going higher. But... That, this was a pretty good downtrend, and this is the first break. And really what you got, you got your break here, and no, you got a two-legged correction. And that could be the center of the pattern. And notice that's where I marked it. I marked this leg over here, and then I brought it over. And hopefully you can see there's a leg up, a leg down, and a leg up. There's a two-legged correction there. And so this is a good place for a possible trend, the trend to reestablish itself. There is a second entry short right here. Um, notice there's a little trend working up. You get a break and a couple of legs up here. I didn't mark this one, although I probably should have at least made it green because it is uh, technically it's not a second entry, and that's the reason I didn't. Hopefully you can see there's two legs up there. So... On a bigger picture, it is a second entry, but counting from here, it's like a first, second, third, fourth. It's like a fifth entry. So it's not a, oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's not a true second entry. So it's a little bit aggressive. Um, so you may, you may argue for it to be green, but there's a lower high here, but you're still above the EMA. You're kind of working sideways here. And you just keep working and working. Now you do get a, you make that high. You do get a little double test here with a fairly bearish bar. But you don't have much room to these lows right here. And this is just a little trading range. I didn't draw it in there. But hopefully you can see that little congestion area. And you were better off to wait till prices broke out and came back and give you a lower high here. And that's a little breakout pullback short, but it's also a try to go higher once, twice. It's also a failed second entry long, so it's a little bit of a reversal pattern. So if you're going to go short, that's the place, and this is the trade of the day. The thing just takes off, and it doesn't check up until you overshoot down here. And even then, you just work sideways again. You get another little failed breakout here, but you got to go short right into what looks like the lows there. And this is probably a little, well, probably a little bit lower there. Like so. And you're just working sideways. And you don't have much room there. So I don't think you can go short there. And then we work back over to the trend line. And you get a lower high here. And this is actually a first entry. And then it breaks higher. This is a second entry. All This is all in one bar again. It's... Similar to the last one, where was it? Um, somewhere over there, I can't remember which one it was. But it's a second entry all in one bar. So, uh, anyway, you might go short right there. And again, it makes another nice move down. Keeps going. Notice you get a first entry, and then there's a second entry right there, but not a very good signal bar. And then you come up here, and really, once again, you got two legs back. It's not a second entry by the count, but hopefully you can clearly see the two legs back right there. And then you get a nice bearish bar. This makes a matching high right here. So even though, it, even though it's kind of an outside bar, it, it still can count as your signal bar because the highs are matching. 
So I like going short right there. It took it a second, but again, it drops on down. And then you just kind of go on this huge sideways thing. Uh, this one was a possibility um, because it's a first entry and then a second entry. And again, it breaks higher and turns down. It's an engulfing bar, but you have to go short right in here, right into the EMA. And you really, there's a little trend line working up and it really, you would think you would get a break and you try to go higher and then down. Okay, another interruption. I don't know what the deal is today, but um, I can't remember where we were either. I think we were talking about this trade, two legs back, and then we work down again. And then we just start working sideways again here. And again, there's another two legs, um, but you can clearly see that trend line working up. And this is the first close outside. There's a good chance it could try to go higher again. You get a lower high here which normally I'd like that trade, but being right into that support, this is what happens. It probably would have still got you, given you a scalp, but it, it they tend to snap back. And it turns out this is just a sideways range. Uh, but we did go lower here, and you break out. You make a lower high, it breaks higher and turns down. So that's probably going to trap some people. So the fact that as long as you've got enough room to get out before here, you could go short there. And maybe since we've already broken out, it'll take on off. Doesn't work out that way, but you had enough room to scalp out. If you wait till here and go short, I don't know if you've got enough room, but when it comes by, it actually breaks higher. This is an engulfing bar. Just go short one tick below that if it breaks lower, and sure enough, it does. And so that would have been a nice trade. It bounces. You get another lower high here, but that's just too, I mean, it's too congestive. It would have worked, but you don't know that ahead of time. And again, it's just we're just working sideways. There's another failed breakout here, and this one is very tempting, and it does look good at the in the end. But I just don't think you can risk that because it could turn right down here and bounce and go higher and stop you out. So, uh, and then we just go into a tighter range here. And I don't really like any of this except for here. You finally get a lower high. With room to get out there it, you notice there's a midline there but that's just because it automatically draws it when i draw the little channels so you can ignore that basically because we're clearly going from high to low to high to low consistently and so we're probably going back to the low here and so i don't have a problem entering that when i like that trade in fact and Notice that we just go back to the high. You get another chance here, but it's too close to the lows. This one's too close to the lows. And then you're off to the races. And then finally, you get a second entry short right here. It's the first break of that channel. Second entry short. And then you get a lower high here. This one's getting a little more dangerous because you don't have a whole lot of room there. Um, but this is a pretty strong downtrend. And we're making a lower high right there. And... Uh, but you'd want to be aware of that. That's something to think about. Um, I just like this one still because we're probably going to make a new low at the very minimum. And we're probably, at this point, you you might have verified this midline. It's probably doubtful that most people would have that. But we're, we're you can clearly see we're making new lows here. And we're probably going lower. So off we go. And then we just go sideways again. And I don't, don't see anything in there that's worth taking. You definitely don't want to be going long in here with everything still below the EMA. It's tempting to go short all the way down through here. And you probably would have been okay on any of them. Except maybe this one if you went short there. But obviously you probably, you know, with all the, with that one being an inside bar and hopefully in a, being a little double bottom there, you'd realize you don't want to go short. Any of these others, if you went short, you might have been okay. But notice it comes back far enough to stop you out on any one of those. So I just think you're better off to – it's just too tight across there. And then this is a repeat pattern to – where was it? This This right here. See that pattern where we made the little breakout pullback short. And 
we made that little repeat pattern right here again breakout pull back short you push through first and it breaks higher and turns down and off to the races it goes again we come back to the trend line a couple of times here but you're just getting so far away from the EMA and these are all making new lows so I don't think it's worth risking and then finally we bounce here for some reason my big channels off it should be a little lower there I probably touched it somewhere along the line or something but um, notice that you run up you get a first entry here and then you get a second entry that fails right there but I think it's too early to try to take a failed second entry short if you'd have gone long there and been willing to ride that out it would have worked but I just think it's too early yet uh, that's the first break of this channel all the way down. There's too big a chance we could go lower, but watch what happens. You made that low, you come back, you test it once, and you also test the trend line in the EMA, then you come back and you test it all again, and you still close inside that trend line. So you get a double test um, of the support area, you get a double test of the EMA, you really get a couple of tests of the trend line and they all hold and you get this nice bullish bar if it breaks higher we're going higher at least probably another leg like this and look at it go if you catch that one trade off it goes they run up here and you you get your first break here with a second entry long and it actually breaks lower and turns and goes out the other side i like going long one tick above that and you actually get another second entry here. Notice the high first entry, second entry. Uh, but this is not a very good signal bar. But you try to go lower again. So now you got that low, first entry short, second entry short. And it actually breaks lower and turns and goes out the upper side. And that's a failure. Uh, sure sign we're probably going to push up to a, another new high and off it goes. So I like going long there. And you actually... Uh, now you've had your break a couple of legs up this is not quite a lower high it's a double top so you could treat it like a lower high but i just think it's a little bit early to be going long or, or short i'm sorry and you don't want to go long now so i just count that as a new high and then you get a first entry and you try to go higher here on a second entry and it fails um that's a failed second entry long you may jump in there. It's a little bit aggressive. You can see the trend line working down off of that. Um, and we actually get a break real quick. That takes you in the 2 o'clock hour. And you really don't get anything else. So I, th I just think that one's a little bit aggressive. But it is a failed second entry long. And it's probably going to act as a little trap. And you can see it quickly shoots down real quick. A couple of bar bearish bars. And that does kind of show you it was a trap there. So if you back back out, I mean, it looks like a really strong bullish day or bearish day. And it was, but really from about 10 o'clock to almost lunchtime, it did not barely anything. And then it drops again. And then from 1130 to almost 1230, it doesn't do anything again before it drops down. So that it makes it hard to get in a rhythm when it's like that and this stuff right here will chop you to pieces but keep in mind that we're trend that we trended down into all of these and the odds are we're probably going to if we succeed on a breakout it's probably going to be with the trend so we're going to probably break out the low side so don't try even when you get a trend a small uh, congestion area or small trading range like this that you trade down into you're probably only going to want to sell the, the highs and forget about the lows because you don't want to be buying in a strong downtrend like that. Because if you do, you'll end up getting burned. And I'm sure somebody watching this video tried to buy some of these playing the range rules and wonder why it didn't work. Well, don't try to buy range when the trend is down strongly like this. And when you get these real tight trends, like that's a strong those are strong trend moves so when the selling hit it hit hit strong it just would dry up and go sideways for a while so this was a pretty big sell-off today we actually 
closed here Friday at 34.55. So that's a 100-point move in one day. That's a huge move. So, of course, we took some of it back. Um, we probably took 30 or 40 points of it back there before the day was over. So it didn't end up as bad as it was at one time, but that's a pretty strong sell-off. So uh, anyway, we're 25 minutes into this, so I'm not going to beat around the bush. Just a reminder again, no chart lesson tomorrow, uh, no mid-morning chart tomorrow. I'll be off tomorrow for my eye surgery. So hopefully you'll see me Wednesday, and if you don't, then you'll know that you'll know what's up. I probably needed an extra day for whatever reason. But at this point, I plan to be back Wednesday, so... Um, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for today. Uh, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.